clip that you saw yeah. on Sunday actually was the kickoff to this message. Come on, come on. <clears throat> we had just come from eating dinner and everyone in the truck was asleep. <laughs> and as I began to drive down the road, I popped in an old CD that I did back in 2007. And as I began to hear the testimony of that entire project that God had brought me through, tears began to flow down my eyes. Yes. And as the tears began to flow in the CD, I told the people, I said, don't wait until the battle is over, but shout now. Come on, I know that's right. And time I said, shout now, something said, pull the trunk over and just give me more. Hey. And I pulled the truck over and I jumped out of the car and I turned the radio up and I began to praise the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Not knowing that that praise was going to wake everybody else up. Come on, come on. But they didn't ask any questions. The kids jumped out of the car. My father jumped out with his cane. And we all just began to praise the Lord on the side of Moses. And the praise got so good until when I get back in the car, I began to think about all the things that God brought me through. And I said, I can't complain. Now, let me just tell you a little bit of the testimony. Go ahead. Oh, Tess. Go ahead. But when God dropped in my spirit to do a project back in 2007, I had no money. Come on. Had no musician. Come on. Had no choir. I had nothing. Come on. Come on. And I began to question, and you know how we get when God gives us something, we begin to analyze it. And I began to analyze all the things that I don't have, and God said, just do it. Come on. All right. So, Spirit gave me, set up a calendar with all your rehearsals. Come on. I began to set up the calendar, all the rehearsal dates. Then the Spirit said, now put the word out. Whoever comes, that's who you use. Put the word out. First rehearsal, nobody showed up. Yes. And I got a little down in my spirit. But I began to walk the aisles of the cathedral. Come on, come on. And as I began to walk the aisles of the cathedral, I could just hear the spirit putting a song down in my spirit saying, My soul loves Jesus. Yes, and I began to walk the aisles singing that song over and over and over and over and over again until. I just couldn't contain myself. Yes, yes. The next rehearsal, nobody showed up. I found myself having another solo praise party. By the third and fourth rehearsal, God was sending one person, then two people. And I began to just rehearse with the people I had. And then as we began to rehearse, and every time we came together, the Spirit of the Lord met us. Then after a while, I met a musician. Come on. Then a musician went and got another musician, and so on and so forth. But as I began to think about how God, all he wanted me to do was just show up. Right. And how he began to put everything together. Yes, yes. And as I was sitting in the car, and I could just imagine every piece of the puzzle that God was putting together, and I said, my God, Lord, do it one more time. Yes. And there was no dispute what this message should be about. Come on. I want to use for a subject. I'm going to try not to get ahead of myself because I'm getting a little happy. But I'm going to use for a subject, just show up and don't stop working. When God gave me this message about Zerubbabel and how God had commissioned the people of Israel to go back and rebuild the temple. Yes. Now, the temple was already um, built by Solomon, but then Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple. So for a long time, years, the yes. temple went unbuilt. Yes. Yes. And when God went and commissioned the people to go back to build the temple, I like it over in Haggai when he said, 
to the people, how can you be in your sealed houses knowing that my house is going to waste? And that thing begins to go on and on about how they labor and how they work hard. This is my interpretation. How they worked hard but didn't see the product of what they were doing. And I began to think about in our society how we do things and we work hard and we, we try to obtain the, the perfect life, the big house with the white picket fence and we make sure our kids are in the best of schools, wearing the best of clothes and we make sure everything and our thing is together. But when it comes to the house of the Lord, we don't have time. We don't come and, and give of our service. We don't have finances. One thing my father used to always say, if you ain't got time, you got money. If you ain't got money, you got time. But we don't have neither. So God was telling Haggai, he said, look, go back and tell the people, and I'm going to just paraphrase, if they begin to build on my house, everything they do will be blessed. And when Heggy I went and told the people, they all got, get, got together and he, he, he anointed Zerubbabel, he anointed Joshua to carry out the mission and start up something in the people. You know how it is when you first get started into something? It's real good. You got a zeal. You excited. You happy. That's how the people were. They were excited. They were happy. But then as that thing got to lingering on and they looked at the foundation and looked at all the rubble around them, it's like, uh, we'll never get through with this temple. They got discouraged. And as a leader, Zerubbabel got discouraged. Can you imagine? And I know what he felt like. Can you imagine going somewhere, you trying to do something, not just for your benefit, but for the benefit of the people? Can you imagine coming somewhere, your baby, and nobody's showing up for work? When they do come, they come late. When they come, their hearts are not in it. He got discouraged. But then God sent Zechariah by to encourage Zerubbabel and told him, go ahead and just rebuild the temple. I am with you. That right there was big. Knowing the fact that whatever God has sanctioned me to do, he's with me. When God is in something, you are bound to succeed. But you got to be willing to keep working. Despite what it looks like, despite the circumstances, despite what the facts may say, you got to keep working. Oh, Zerubbabel had to do was just show up on the scene. And God would honor his faith. So there he was, in the midst of all that rubble. The people had got discouraged and started lingering and not showing up. But then when God sent that angel back to confirm Zerubbabel, God said, he's with you. Zerubbabel, be strong in the Lord. Zerubbabel, God's got your back. I can imagine he was a little bit encouraged, but he was still a little doubtful. So then Zechariah had to just break it down to him. He said, look. There's a stone over there. That's the capstone. The finishing stone. Yes. Take that stone and that, that will be the last stone placed in the temple. All right. Come on. But you got to do something. Yes. You got to speak to the stone. Yes. 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 Now, if somebody came up to you and told you, oh, oh you want you trying fulfilled, but all you got to do is speak to a rock. Your man to say, what? Come on. That's crazy. Come on. But all he had to do was speak My to the rock. Yeah. Come on. Come on. It wasn't so much of him having to increase his faith. It was so much that God wanted to show him that there is power in the words that you say. God was teaching him that if you can put on your spiritual glasses of 
imagination and just begin to transform your way of thinking. And when you begin to transform the way of thinking, God will begin to transform the way of seeing. So he told him, go ahead and speak to that rock. And when he spoke to that rock, he said, grace, grace. Come on. And I just want to add the grace of God. Yes. And then other biblical scriptures interpreted as God bless it. Yes. And I think I began to think about how God had told him to speak to the, the rock. And I began to think about how God blesses our beginnings. Well. But he requires us to speak to our ending. Oh, yes. Oftentimes when you get in a situation, the devil has a way of making you thinking it's not going to happen. It can't happen. He not only begins to put doubt in your mind, but he begins to send others around to put their limitations on what you can do. But if we could just get in our minds that I serve a God that's great and mighty. I serve a God that everything belongs to him. I serve a God that is big. I serve a God that if I just show up, he's going to show out. Development Art Center. And when we first started, we didn't have no finances. I ain't gonna tell you all my testimony. I'm gonna just get to today. We've been renting space. And we do so much with the children. We don't have any grants. We don't have any government funding. Everything we do comes out of our pocket. But I was taught early on that when you take care of God, so I don't mind giving not only my dad, but giving a dad. So we were behind on our rent. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We were behind on our rent. I said, well, let's go talk to him and tell him that we're going to try to settle this account. Come on. Hallelujah. And when we met with him, he began to just talk to us uh -huh. and told us how our program is impacting his school. Come on, come on, come on. And he began to tell us how they implemented a performing arts school. But the kids don't want to go. They want to go to Jesse Lewis. Hey! He said, we were just getting ready to put on a performance. And the lady couldn't get none of the kids to cooperate. Because they said, we don't want to do nothing that's going to interfere with Jesse Lewis. Hallelujah. And as he began to talk, he began to say, how you all have been a blessing to us. We want you to stay here. So and 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 And when he got through, I said, well, we want to settle our account. He said, I tell you what. Consider the accounts. Thank <laughs> you. 
situation, you wait on certain things to happen. You wait on certain circumstances to happen. If I could get this one on board, I can do that. If I could get that one on board, I can do that. But I came to tell you that he's all you need. He's all you need. He's all you need. He's all you need.
there's anybody here that needs prayer. Amen. She just showed up. How many of you need prayer? Amen. 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 Amen